First Alert Weather with meteorologist Zach Fradella. All right, before we get into kind of what's going to happen, how is it going to happen, and how much is going to fall in regards to the rain, let's talk about some flash flooding preparedness, okay? Know your risks. That's probably the biggest thing. You know where you live. You know how flood prone you are. And one thing I want to point out is clear the drainage around your house. That includes your gutters because you probably have a lot of leaves from winter and also just the drainage in the culverts. And once we get to Tuesday, park on elevated surfaces. Do not park in the street, especially if you know that street floods fairly easily because that's a kind of recipe for disaster. Flash flood watch, flash flood warning. What's the difference between the two? Flash flood watch, probably going to go under that tomorrow. That's just basically telling you the chances are there that we could deal with flash flooding. When you go under a warning, that means flooding is occurring at that time and you need to stay put. That's the big thing, the warning. That is the thing you need to kind of stay wherever you are when you hear that warning go off. That is a flash flood warning. Protect your property. If you live near, say, rivers, streams, and you know who you are who deals with that flooding, you probably want to get some sandbags over the next few days and have a plan to leave in case that flooding does get, say, uh, in some regards, uh, dangerous to you're actually in your property, and then stay informed. The KPLC weather app, we talked about it before the break. Just text weather to 33777. The NOAA weather radio should already have that. And then social media, again, we don't advise you to depend solely on social media to receive weather information, but you could follow all of the Seven Storm team on all the different things Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Here we go tonight. No weather issues. Tomorrow, really no weather issues. The wind is really going to start to howl, and we're going to see much more clouds as compared to this weekend. Highs tomorrow might actually approach 80 degrees, even with those clouds. But notice the rain to the north. That's the start of the mess. And then as we go into Tuesday, Tuesday morning, all is dry. But watch when I press this button. This is noon Tuesday. No issues. But watch when I push this button. Look what happens. The atmosphere starts firing off storms, mainly to, say, across southeastern Texas. Not so much across southwest Louisiana. But this is going to be kind of the first batch the first batch of many. That's the problem. It's going to be a multi-day event. This is going into, say, Tuesday night and Wednesday, so we're going to pick up with a different system. This is the big aerial pressure over northern Mexico. That's the problem. Look how far south it is. Usually we don't get these aerial pressures developing this far south, but this one will, and the stream of moisture is going to come from the Pacific. It's going to come from the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to come from the Caribbean, and you see this stream of moisture. This is all kind of the moisture in the atmosphere when we get to Thursday. Put this in motion. Friday still hasn't really moved, still pointing directly into Louisiana. And finally, maybe by Saturday, this area of pressure kicks out. So that's why I'm saying we have a multi-day event. This is not going to be just one day. It's going to start Tuesday night. We'll probably have a break Tuesday, say overnight hours. And then Wednesday's probably going to be the worst of it. But this is my numbers that I'm putting out there right now. This is the first forecast. We can easily change this. I'm taking all of the computer model data and I'm kind of figuring out what do I think is going to happen. Well, I think northwestern areas, especially eastern Texas, where that first batch really hammers really hard Tuesday, could be up to a foot when all is said and done once we get to, say, about Friday. Most of southwest Louisiana, I think, probably 8 to 10 inches. And then once you get in the outlying areas, probably 5 to 8, even across eastern Louisiana. So really the entire state is going to have to deal with this. So this is how it all plays out in regards to the weather impacts and the timing of them. Winds. This is outside of any thunderstorm activity. 30 to 40 miles per hour gusts will start, say, Monday night and continue into Tuesday before we get any rainfall across the region. And then once you combine the rainfall, I just showed you some of the totals that we could be seeing, and we're still getting these gusts on Wednesday once the rain's really starting to get heavy. That could lead to possibly some, say, trees being down just from the fact that the, you know, the soggy soils are going to allow those trees to topple a little bit easier. And yeah, we do have a severe threat, not as high as the flooding threat. That's going to be mainly at the onset of the storms Tuesday afternoon, continuing into, say, the first half of Wednesday. And if you live along the coast, strong southerly winds really all week long. You know what happens when that happens. Well, we deal with above normal tides, and also that could exacerbate the problem in regards to the flooding or the water trying to get out of the region. There's a look out of our Lake Charles Sky Cam. The wind's staying up. That should not allow any of that fog to develop, but it's something we're going to have to watch as we go, say, through the overnight hours. But it could be patchy first thing tomorrow morning. But Monday, the next day, going to be dry, but you'll notice the increase in clouds and then the rest of the week. It's just going to be ugly around here, so you're going to have to keep it tuned. Remember, this is a forecast. It can change, and we're going to continue to keep you updated as we go into the new work week. At least we had a nice weekend. Yeah. Right. Always think about the past. <laughs> well, in